Hello there, I'm Victoria Williams and in this video I'm going to explain to you how to work out a time signature for the Grade 5 Music Theory exam style questions. Please make sure that you've watched the first video on time signatures which is called How Time Signatures Work before you watch this video or you might not understand everything that I'm talking about. This is what your question might look like. So you can see the time signature is missing and we've got one bar of rhythm. You might have two bars. The first thing you need to do is count up the beats and then try to divide the bar into two, three or four equal blocks. So if we count up the crotchet beats here, we've got minim, which is worth two. We've got two quavers, which is worth one and then another minim. So that makes a total of five crotchets worth. Since we can't divide five up into two, three or four and get a whole number as the answer, this means the time signature here must be irregular. But what is the time signature? What do we count? Is it 10 quavers, 10 eight? Is it five crotchets, five four? Or could it be two and a half minims? Well, with irregular time, the best thing to do is to count the longest note value that you can, but don't use a fraction as the top note. So in this case, we can't count minims because that would mean a fraction as the top note, two and a half. So the next longest note we can count is crotchets, meaning that the time signature here is five, four. OK, let's take a look at a slightly more complicated bar. There's lots more notes here. But we begin in exactly the same way by first counting up the notes and then trying to divide the bar into two, three or four equal blocks. Let's have a go. So here I've marked out the crotchet beats. The first two quavers make up one crotchet beat. Then we've got three crotchets. And then I've drawn two lines just to show that the dotted crotchet and the first quaver rest together make up two crotchet beats. And then the second quaver rest and the quaver note make up another one crotchet beat. And then the two quavers at the end make up another crotchet. So that means that we've got eight crotchets worth in total. So we take the number eight and we try to divide it by two, three or four to work out whether it's duple, triple or quadruple time. The easiest way to do this is just to try and draw blocks around the notes in the bar. So with eight crotchet beats, we can easily divide them up into two equal sized blocks for duple time. If we try and do the same with three equal blocks, we get into a bit of a pickle because we can't divide eight by three and get a whole number. And finally, for quadruple time, again, it's easy to divide up eight crotchet beats into four equal blocks. So is it duple or is it quadruple time? Well, let's have a look at the actual time signatures. What do we actually need to count? Is it eight crotchets? Is it four minims? Or is it two semi-briefs? Think back to the regular time signatures. The top number is always going to be two, three, four, six, nine, or 12. And the lower number is normally two, four, eight, and sometimes 16, but it's never one. So in this case, it can't be eight, four, because we can't have a top number eight. And it can't be two, one, because the lower number can't be one. So that leaves us with four, two. And here's the last example we're going to do today. Again, we'll start by counting up the beats, but because there aren't any crotchets in this bar, it makes sense to count the quavers instead. That'll be a bit easier. So there are a total of six quavers in this bar. We can't divide six into four, so we can discount quadruple time. So what is it, duple or triple time? We can certainly divide this bar up into three very easily, but look at those beams, the B and the D are not beamed together. This is a really important clue because notes within a single block should be beamed together. So let's try to divide the bar into two for duple time instead. This time the break in the beam is in the same place as the break in the blocks. This is the right way to break up beams, so this shows that this bar is a duple time bar. 
In each block, the value of the notes is the same as three quavers. Now remember that it's compound time, which has three subbeats per bar. So this one is compound time. We count the subbeats. We know there are six quavers. And so the time signature here is 6-8. And now here's a summary of everything we've covered in this video. To work out the time signature, the first thing you need to do is count up how many beats there are in the bar. Next, check whether that number will divide equally into 2, 3 or 4. If it doesn't, you're looking at an irregular time signature. If the time signature is irregular, you need to use the longest possible beat for the time signature lower note. If the number of beats in the bar does divide into two, three or four equal blocks, then you're looking at regular time, which could be simple or compound. Use the beamed notes to identify blocks. Count up the blocks per bar. There must be two, three or four blocks per bar. Then count how many beats there are per block and work out the time signature from that. Here's a question you can practice on. I'll ask you a few questions to help you think it through. You can pause the video while you're working it out. The first question is, how many quaver beats are there in the bar? The answer is, there are eight quaver beats in the bar. Question two. If there are eight beats in the bar, is the time signature going to be irregular or regular? Well, because eight divides both into two and four, it's going to be a regular time signature. So my last question is, what is the time signature? Is it eight eight, is it four four, or is it two two? Actually, this is a bit of a trick question. The fact is that 4-4 four, four and 2-2 two, two look exactly the same on paper. There's no way to tell the difference just by looking. The difference between 4-4 four, four and 2-2 two, two is something that some people can tell by listening, but you can't tell just by looking. It's not 8-8 eight, eight because the top number of the time signature is never 8, but you could put the answer 4-4 four, four or 2-2 two, two for this bar and both of them would be correct. OK, we've now finished with working out the time signature. In the next video, we're going to look at how to add rests.